Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. This is part 24 of my Logic Pro 11 Mixing Fundamentals course, and it's also the final video in the course. In this one, we're going to go through another round of mix revisions. Personally, I like to listen to my mixes several times over the course of a few days so I can come back to them with fresh ears, and I don't just listen in the studio. I'll check the mix on headphones, earbuds, in my car stereo, and even on a portable speaker, because these are the kinds of systems real listeners are going to be using. And most importantly, referencing your mix on different playback systems is key to making sure it translates well everywhere. Another point I wanna make is that at this stage, it's really important not to overanalyze your mix or fall into the trap of making endless tiny surgical tweaks. I've seen plenty of great mixes start to fall apart from too many micro adjustments. Just remember, the goal of mixing is not perfection, it's balance. I've definitely had moments where I or a client went too deep on these surgical revisions and ended up making the mix sound worse than it did two revisions ago. So if you're like me and you tend to get really hyper-focused on the small details, it's worth taking a step back and taking a 10,000-foot view of the song. The big picture matters more than any individual track. So after giving the song multiple revisions and listening on multiple different systems, I've come up with a list of about 10 final mix revisions that I want to make. We'll go through these together to tighten things up while keeping the overall feel and cohesion of the mix intact. Okay, so let's go through and make each of these mix revisions. Like I said before, there's about 10 of these I want to make. The very first one is at the very beginning. For some reason in headphones and earbuds, I can hear a little bit of a noise right at the beginning here, right where the song fades in. Let's see if I can pull that up here and see if we can actually hear that. Yeah, I'm not quite hearing it. So I think what I'm gonna do is pull this forward a little bit. I'll actually even adjust my bounce range a touch. And I'll go to my master here and I'll go ahead and do like a, a quick fade in right at the beginning. I know we already have a fade there, but I just want to make sure that we're not getting like some erroneous noise in there. I'm not sure if it's from the dithering or if it's from the sample here, the, the effects sample or not. The next one is that the rhythm guitars are sounding a little bit too bright for my liking. So I think what I might do is I may roll back this mid frequency uh, boost here a little bit to a different frequency. I may not actually pull back the gain much, but I might just adjust the mid frequency here. Yeah, I think I like that a little bit better in the 2K range rather than in the 3K range. I even added a little bit more of a boost there. It was just getting a little too crispy for my taste. Next up, we have the leads in the instrumental section and the outro. I feel like these are a little too bright. Maybe they need a little bit more filtering on them. I know I pulled out the filtering, but I think I'm gonna pull it back again. <laughs> And then while we're talking about the leads, the solo, I think, has a little bit too much of the thickening effect. It was this chorus effect we used. So that was bus 11. I'm just going to dial back bus 11 a touch. And I want to give this a little bit more of a, a bottom end boost just to kind of thicken up the tone a bit. In certain spots where I'm sliding around on the neck, you can hear like a low end rumble. So what I'm going to do is actually even filter this a little bit further just to get rid of that low end rumble.
Next up are the backing vocals in the chorus. I feel like I'm actually hearing too much of the diction, too much of the consonants, that is. So I think I'm going to add a little more compression. We're going to make the attack time a little shorter, and we're going to do a little bit more of the wet signal and a little less of the dry signal. Again, a super minor change. And then I also want to hear a little bit more of the high backing vocal. I can't read your heart with yeah, the low ones are fine. Let's pull up the, the high ones a little bit. Oh, that's right. I have automation on this track. So what I'm going to have to do is I either need to change all of this automation on the right or left side of the automation that's drawn here, or a little quick trick that I do all the time when I'm doing mix revisions is just add the gain plugin to the end of the channel strip and then make your gain adjustment here. So let's just add like 1 dB to both of these. And a 1 dB change is not really going to be that noticeable to, to most people. Really, like a 2 or 3 dB change is what's going to be the most noticeable. But again, I just want this to be just a very slight change, just to hear a little bit more of those top vocals. Okay, I take it back. We'll do 1.5 on each of those. Okay, so this next one is probably the biggest issue uh, with this mix, and it actually has nothing to do with the mix. It has to do with my editing. There is a glitch in here in the lead vocal in all three of the choruses. Um, it's on the word misery. I think it's somewhere about halfway through. Yeah, other than like the crackling that's going on in there from flex pitch, there's not really much we can do about that unless we add like a third party click or crackle uh, removal plugin. I keep on tearing through your tragedies. I took the brunt of your shame and all your misery. It and all your misery. It yeah, it's right there on the miser of misery. So what can we do? Well, what well, we did save our alternate takes here in the track alternative. Misery. Misery. That doesn't actually sound like a bad edit. That actually sounds like uh, you know, something that got messed up as a result of flex pitch. So let's go ahead and just grab that section there. In fact, I'll just grab that whole little phrase there. Cut it. I'm going to go ahead and flatten this stack. I'm going to cut this, go back to track alternative B where my main edit is. Let's turn on no overlap editing, paste that in. And all your misery, it's just a gap. In fact, maybe we'll take it all the way back to here and we'll use X fade to add a little bit of a cross fade at the beginning and end of the phrase here, trying to still make sure those breaths are gone. Shame and all your misery. It's just a gap. And then off screen, I'll just copy that over to the other two choruses. Shame and all your misery. It's just a goddamn shame that you cannot see. Okay, so that was the main issue that was really irking me. And then the very last revision is that I just want a little bit more bass overall. I feel like um, I'm not getting enough fundamental bass. I can't Okay, so a little bit more bass overall. I also dialed back the loudness a few clicks. I think it's, uh, you know, by adding in that extra bass, I think the, you know, the digital space is getting filled up a bit too much. So I think we're about good there. 
Okay, so I listened to the whole thing a few times off screen, and I think we're all good to go. All you need to do at this point is hit Command B to bring up your bounce dialog again. Just one little tricky thing about Logic's bounce dialog, the sample rate will not stay on the previous sample rate that you selected before, so you gotta make sure to manually change this back to 44.1. By default, Logic will stick with the sample rate uh, that the song was recorded at. I'm also gonna try out the UV22HR dithering. Now I've actually already bounced this off screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the entire track so you can hear the entire song from beginning to end. I thoroughly hope you guys enjoyed this course. Again, remember if you want to purchase the course and get access to the demo projects along with the multi-tracks to practice mixing on your own, you can check it out over at my website, logicproguide.com. All right, I'll leave you with a playthrough of Now That You're Sober from Right Stripped mixed with all stock plugins other than a couple of amp sims. <laughs> 